So this video has been a long time in coming. I've wanted to do a video like this about my production van for the last year since I got the production van. I've actually done a lot of filming of the development of the van, but this is the first video. Um, and kind of like a lot of the other reviews and other things I do, I like to wait longer to, I'm actually, until I'm actually using a product or been working with something before uh, I talk about it uh, with my audience. So this, uh, it's a 2023 Ford Transit uh, high roof, medium length. Uh, I got it in the April of 2023 last year. So this is at this time of recording, May 2024. So I've been using this for about a year or just over a year. And the reason I went to this van and wanted this as my production van and kind of production hub was kind of from the style of work I do. So if you don't know who I am or what I do, I'm a freelance videographer, cinematographer, director of photography. I do a lot of kind of documentary style shooting, documentary shoots, corporate video, branded content. I get hired by other production companies to come out as the DOP, uh, owner operator with all my own gear, my own camera, my own lighting gear, my own grip gear, and show up at set with that. Uh, that's kind of my go-to model for my production work. And I also run a small production company where we create a lot of tourism videos, a lot of content, corporate content, stuff for ski hills, a bunch of different things, all kind of very pretty wide gamut of things from instructional videos to promotional commercials uh, to broadcast commercials. We do quite a bit of things, but working in the same kind of style of very small crew, typically myself, maybe a production assistant, maybe a camera assistant, typically, you know, like a three or four person crew at kind of max. And a lot of times I'm going out by myself or myself with a PA or a camera assist or a PA slash camera assist. Somebody who can kind of shoot a second camera for me or help me set up and help me lug around some equipment. Prior to having my van, I had a 2014 or 2015 Dodge Ram. Uh, long box in the back. So it was a pickup truck, a Hemi, very big vehicle, wide that way or long that way. Uh, I love driving it. It was a great truck, um, but I had that for six or oh geez, I had that until 2023. So I had like seven years or more of production. Um, I put close to 300,000 kilometers on it. I drove to the states a bunch. It drove to the other provinces in Canada a bunch. It drove to all these different locations. Um, I had a cap on the back of it that I had kind of custom made with no windows and I had a pull out bed. So I put my gear in it and I made a second level on that and it worked very well. Most of the time there is situations where I wish I had something I could be inside. Uh, I, I live and work in Canada. I work in kind of a more of a ski area destination, tourism destination part north of Toronto. So I do a lot of work outside in different weather conditions. So having something that I can kind of go back to and, and be safe in and, and safe from the elements and be able to do camera prep inside of was a big deal for me. And that's not really what I got with my with my truck. It was kind of once I had it open, the bed, pull all the stuff out, it was very exposed. Um, but it did work well and it worked great for the time that I had it. So when I was getting to that end of being kind of safe to drive and the amount of kilometers that I had on it that I was gonna break down and cause a big you know, need for repair, I started thinking about what I wanted to drive. And, you know, a Ford Sprinter kind of thing, or sorry, a Mercedes Sprinter, Ford Transit kind of style vehicle. I looked around at different ones. And again, where I live, the Ford Transit was the only one available in a four or all wheel drive. The uh, Mercedes Sprinter was available in four wheel drive. Um, and the Promaster is available in front wheel drive, which is still better than just a rear wheel drive vehicle. I actually don't know how big of a problem that would be in most cases because of how much gear and, and weight that I have in the back of it. If it wouldn't be a problem if I just had a rear wheel drive, but I chose to go with an all wheel drive. I did a custom kind of build from um, the dealership in town here where I live. I, it took almost a year to get it. <laughs> That's when I started started looking at. So I started looking at 2022 and put money down and deposit on one and ordered one in 2022 and it came in 2023. 
Um, at the time during COVID, these things were like, you know, gold. They were going all over the place. UPS drivers or FedEx drivers and Amazon drivers, all these people were taking these vehicles to uh, buying these ones used. And they had a, a crazy used real sale value because you couldn't get these. So they were selling for more than an actual brand new one was with 100,000 kilometers on it and rust and all that stuff. So for me, it was like, I'm just gonna wait, get what I want um, and do that. Another big thing that you'll notice when I'm looking at some of this footage here, it's very evident when you're seeing this stuff is the exterior, that the roof of it, I do have solar panels on that. And I have that going to a battery bank. Um, and then that goes to um, just different outlets in my van that I have built out. So I can really have this as a place where it can be going back to putting all my batteries on, charging batteries, or I can be charging batteries when I'm on the set, charging drones, doing work in the van if I need to in the evenings, transferring footage on set. The batteries, the battery system I have, uh, and the, the solar panel has been like a game changer for me. I'm doing a separate video just on that, on, on where I got it from, how easy they made it to install. Um, really a great, great thing to have. And again, for me, that was kind of the big game changer is like, I wasn't moving stuff like batteries in and out of the house all the time and back and forth and charging and into hotel rooms and charging. Uh, I was able to just do everything right in my van and just making it way easier, way more convenient. And one thing I really like to have when I'm working in production is just having like everything with me. So I pretty much keep everything that I have for production gear in this van at any given time. You know, I move out cameras and lenses and other high valuable things in the evenings and to hotel rooms when I'm not uh, staying in the van. But the otherwise I have all the same grip equipment, my teleprompter, oh, different lights, all that stuff I like to keep in the van, even if it's not needed on a job or I don't think it's going to be needed on a job, but just to have just in case it's been so vital and such a good thing for me to have this extra gear with me because it happens so many times where people are like oh i wish we brought this with us or i wish we had this and you know I, hey i have it with me i can bring this out it just makes things way easier and people are very happy when you can solve solutions like that on set and you have that gear with you already so that's kind of i go out as kind of a package i come up with me all my equipment all my gear all my cameras and that's kind of my business model for the way I work as a, a cinematographer and, and videographer. So going back to the build of this van, if you guys are interested and want to see more in depth on the build, I did film a lot of stuff on this. Um, I will do a video like that. Let me know in the comments if you want to see something like that. But for this video itself, it's more on how I'm using this van and why I have it set up the way it is and what I want to change about it. But to go briefly into it, because again, I'm in Canada, I did put insulation in the van, insulated the sides. Uh, I put insulation on the floor to make a subfloor on it. And then I also put a fan in the roof. It was kind of stressful cutting through the roof, putting a fan in. The fan's been a huge, like it, it really does help it a ton. And the insulation works very, very well to keep it from getting super, super cold in the wintertime and also keeping it from getting really hot in the summertime because the sun can bake on the side of these gray walls and stuff on it and really heat it up quite a bit. So it works well with that. And then the fan works great to just kind of cycle the air around in there a bit and get it a little bit cooler. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take you guys through the van. I'm gonna walk through here. I'm gonna show you what I have set up, what I did, where I have stuff why I have it there, and uh, we'll just kind of do a tour that way. So starting here at the back of the van, got both doors open, and I have a lot of my stands and stuff built so they can stand on the doors here, or they can be mounted on the door. So I have these C-stand holders. Uh, Francisco from uh, Production Van Facebook group. Uh, it's actually a great Facebook group if you're looking at building out a production van. Lots of great builds that people are doing and advice. Uh, so he built these out. He was using them himself and he sold them to some other people. So I got him to build these for me. Amazing job on that. If you're interested in those, send me a message and I will connect you with him. And then we have, this is just actually from uh, Home Depot for holding uh, like brooms and other things in your garage. But I have that for my other stands here. Um, just some bungees there. This side, I have a couple of these Savage C stands. I love these actual C stands. They're great kind of kind of modern twist on some C-stand stuff, um, some different add-ons to it. So 
really like these, but I have these up here. You can see this part of the van here was not really finished. I didn't put any insulation in here. That's just some of the noise canceling there. Here I have a Hollywood stand. I have a couple rollers. I have some arms. I have a boom, a bunch of other kind of uh, arms there just to be able to have on hand whenever I need them. Uh, thing of tape here and a thing of clamps here for putting up different things, diffusion and all that stuff. Got some electrical on this side, trying to keep stuff kind of in places where I could easily grab it. <laughs> this is where I was running or had C stands before I put stuff on the door. So I had to cut a hole in it to make it fit. I uh, didn't really think that through when I first built this, but that's why it's kind of ugly there. Um, but that is no longer for C stands. And I actually have this down here. If you can see this, this is an air conditioning unit. Uh, it was an add on when I bought it. It wasn't expensive to add and I thought it'd be a great thing to have. Uh, it only works when my vehicle is running, but I can get it quite a bit cooler back here with this air conditioning unit. So stepping into here, or we'll take a look at the shelves here. Um, built out these shelves out of wood. I just kind of felt it was the quickest and easiest way for me to kind of figure out what would fit. Um, I had to get this height up here because of this um, air conditioning there. Back there is my battery bank that you can see. Um, beside the battery bank there, I have a Nova, an Aperture Nova. Uh, that is one of my wireless kits. I just don't have a space to put it right now. I don't bring it with me always. A uh, bunch of sandbags underneath here. Let's go up here and see what's in here. So I have some different stuff in, uh, I'm just using this uh, bungee cord here to help keep these milk crates in here, but I have a bunch of stuff of safety things, hard hat, uh, reflective vests. I do do a bunch of work in construction sites and filming at different construction sites and um, industrial places like that. So I need that stuff on me quite a bit. Um, I have things here, just XLR cables, some other kind of HMI cables, SCI cables, and then I have uh, a barn doors there for my 600D. I have over here a bunch of clamps, but a grip, a bunch of grip stuff. This here is actually something I love that I have with me. This is a little camping seat folds out like this. I actually use this quite a bit, um, especially on long days shooting gimbal, or if I need something to sit down on when I'm flying an FPV drone, packs up super small and it's been super useful. So I keep that with me all the time. I have cine foil in here. Uh, I have some blackout here. So a couple eight by eight blackout frames here. Uh, the next one here, I haven't really found a great place to put this but this is my ramp. So my camera card over here, um, the ramp can be put down. It is folds down to one quarter of its size. So it's an eight foot by four foot ramp and it folds down this small. I can pull it out, I can undo it and I can roll out my uh, camera cart. So very convenient that way. Up here, I have put this kind of mesh up in some areas to help with holding stuff in. It was kind of a, I don't know, not really a afterthought of what I was building this, but some stuff going around corners because how tall it is can fall out. So in here, I just have an extra backpack for some stuff. I have uh, some road rags, some other four by four frames. I have my easy rig in here. I have some other reflectors there. I have some diffusion back there. Above here, I have an eight by eight frame. Uh, I have my Nanlite tube lights up here as well. Uh, I have a four foot slider up here and some other diff or ND gels up here. Um, this is some of my kind of poor cabling for my electrical. I'm gonna clean this up at some point this year, but I have my kind of breakout box down there for that. And then again, it's coming from this, uh, battery bank down here, which has been running awesome. So going back over to this side now, move this out of the way. I have this four by four floppy here. So this is a four by four floppy, black on one side, one reflective on the other side, white. So I uh, really love these using that quite a bit. Very convenient. 
But then I have some more milk crates. So I have another thing here I can pull up over. Uh, some miscellaneous stuff in here. Uh, all my batteries that have been charged. I have V-mounts. I have, you know, uh, batteries for Epic 6. I have just a bunch of different things. Some other kind of more miscellaneous things in here. Uh, some little a hi-hat here. Some other sticks if I need them. Uh, these other falconized lights, these kind of like matte, they're like light mats. Uh, I have a couple of those in there. I love these, I use them quite a bit. Um, up here, I have my Cam TV spotlight. I have a 600X. I have a uh, Amaran 200X. And then I have uh, Aperture Spot. And I have my big 600D down here. That's kind of my main stuff for my lighting and my uh, Nova over here. Uh, but I do have some more soft boxes up here, uh, domes, different things in that way. Some toolbox up here, again, with some uh, bungees on here to keep things across. And then kind of over to my camera cart. So the camera cart on here um, is designed, so you can't really see it back there, but it is clipped into the wall onto some L track back there. And I can unclip it, pull this out, and I can roll it out of here and roll it out. So um, on this, uh, I have some different other, oh, actually, I missed something up here. I, that is actually my sumo monitor, sorry. This is my Nova underneath the, um, underneath the camera card here. So camera cart doesn't always come out, but sometimes it does, but majority of the stuff on the camera cart will come out at different points. I'll put inside, you know, I have an FX30 in here. Uh, I can keep another of my FX6 in here if I wanted to with some other things in there. I have majority of my lenses in here. Um, I have Mavic Pro Cine there, some matte box stuff, an audio case here, another drone there. And then up here is, uh, where I keep my cameras quite a bit of the time, just making it quick to get off. So what I have here is these little Manfrotto quick release plates. If you can see them there, lighten this up a bit. Yeah, so these oh, Manfrotto quick release plates. And so what I can do here is I can just slide the camera into it. And then I can lock it in there. And while I'm driving, that is safe there. So that's my FX6. So that's my FX6 that I typically use on the gimbal, uh, kind of stripped down. That's my kind of my shoulder rigged um, and my, you know, ENG style FX6, kind of more A cam kind of things. I have another Ronin RS3 here. I have the camera off that that I'm filming with right now, but I usually lay this down. I have an RS4 down there. And then I have my tilter ring that I don't always use, but I uh, use in certain situations with the easy rig. So that kind of hangs up here, just on some hooks over here. Uh, and then I have my uh, boom that I use quite a bit uh, with a Seiken mic on it. Beautiful mic in there, use this thing a ton, um, works great. And then over here, I just have my all my stuff charging. So, you know, I have a place where I can be charging my V mounts here. I have Sony, uh, the batteries with FX6 here. I got Sony L mounts here. I have the Sony DSLR, or whatever the name of those batteries are there. Um, I can be plugging in my drones, batteries, charging that stuff up, you know, charging a gimbal. Again, you can hear the fan probably above me, but this is the fan that's in the van right here that I had installed. It works really well. It's just to get a little bit of airflow in here. Uh, the ceilings and some other lights I put in here. Not the greatest and cleanest configuration, but it's doing its job for now. Definitely some modifications to come. Back here, I have another net that I kind of screwed up on the thing. And in here, I have some uh, diffusion, some eight by eight diffusion, and I have some sound blankets as well. Just kind of a nice place where I can tuck that stuff away. It's not that heavy, it can hold up there. And then I have my Bring them this exposure a bit here. This, my seat stands, or sorry, my tripods here. And uh, they can just kind of hook onto there. And I got some bungees around here. So 
Again, I can quickly grab these. I then have the door into my front of the cab where I'm driving and stuff, just two seats up there. Um, and I can lock this door as well. There's a nice separation to keep the gear separate from you and kind of keep it safe. This is a tool chest. Uh, I got inspiration from this for my cranky cameraman watching his stuff. Nice way to keep some stuff organized in here, different pieces of gear. Um, let's see here, I get the focus here, but there's some audio stuff down there. And the lenses down at the bottom here. Um, yeah, the top drawer fell out because it was not closed properly at one point, but that works really well. And then you can see this thing here, which is kind of funny. You can close this door here, get a little bit better look on this. There we go. You can see some of the insulation actually here from the door from when I built it. So that's what's kind of behind all this other stuff in here against this wood here is this insulation here against the wall. It works really well. I want to clean this up and make that better. Back here, I have a coffee machine, an espresso machine. Uh, it's kind of a funny thing I wanted to put in. I don't always have it in, but I just, you know, can use this and uh, it's just fun to have on different locations and sometimes for clients or other people on crew when we're working to make a coffee in between things especially if I'm in a kind of a remote location. Um, this works really well and fun to do. So I had the power for it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, just some other kind of things up here to hold. Some baskets, some other kind of little bits and bobs. Um, that's basically it. That's kind of the whole tour of what I have in here and what I am doing with stuff in here. Now, in the future, what I would like to do is actually move the camera cart from here, from this side, over to the side over here. So get rid of these shelves here, put the camera cart in there, and then have shelves continue all the way over here, block off this wall here so I could put some more four by four in frames over here. Um, and then that would be, I think, a better configuration because it's just, it is sometimes a little bit of a pain getting the camera cart in and out where it's situated now, is something I didn't really think about. If it was closer to the front, it'd be much easier that way and using the ramp and it's having everything more on that side. I did kind of build this out that I could sleep in the middle here. Other thing is I can put some bikes in here. I love to mountain bike and film a lot of mountain bike stuff. So uh, I can put an e-bike in, I can put my other trail bike in, my gravel bike in, um, fit it in here, go out, and I can be charging my e-bike from the battery as well. Another very key thing that I missed here, very important, is my fridge. It's, Still haven't figured out a way to kind of mount this well. As you can see, I've kind of taped it to the wall here and stuff, but this is a little RV fridge. Um, and I have in here, open it up. I got some bubbly, I got some milk for some lattes and water and uh, some local craft beer for those post shoot pints that are very important to have when you're done your day of production. If you're lucky, you might even get a DSP, a during, sh during shoot pint. Doesn't happen always, but sometimes, especially working at breweries, you can get some during the shoot pints. So uh, that's kind of the tour of everything here. So thanks so much guys for watching this video. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please think of subscribing to the channel. If you wanna see some more content about my van, about how I built out the van and more specifically the tools I use, the different material I bought, you know, how I installed things, please, uh, please let me know in the comments. I am gonna be doing a more in-depth video on my solar panels and the uh, battery bank that I'm using in here. Um, give me kind of some insight on that and we'll see you guys on the next video.